Hi, everybody. Um, it's my basically year anniversary. I'm not sure if it's exactly the, the right day, but basically it's one year since I started hormone replacement, replacement therapy. So I thought today might be a fun or a good time to do a uh, recap. Um, so I'm not wearing uh, any makeup today except for a little bit of eyeliner. And um, the uh, eyeliner is just, I don't know, I want it to look like a little bit pretty, not too pretty. I didn't, I didn't do any other makeup, I just combed my hair and did eyeliner. Um, yeah. So, the year in recap, um, how did I, I just wanted to take this time to go ahead and, and talk about some major events that have happened throughout the year. Um, obviously this all started out um, when I spoke to a gender therapist and um, I'm not going to mention who that gender therapist is because um, I think that gender therapist um, is very terrible, <laughs> basically. And um, uh, yeah, uh, anyway, um, I did go and I, I spoke with the gender therapist. The gender therapist was um, instrumental in kind of encouraging me to say, yes, you, you are indeed transsexual. Um, but beyond that, I don't think that she was any help at all. And I, if, you know, I, you know, it depends how you look at the situation, but one could look at the situation and say like, she might be like a little bit, uh, a little bit predatory, I would say on, on trans people. Um, you, you certainly could see it that way. Um, you might see it a different way also, but that, that would be certainly, um, it is a possibility, and that's why I would certainly not recommend her to anybody. But in any case, um, the one good thing that did come out of speaking with her was that um, she did give me some sort of reassurance and validation that I was trans, although <laughs> I'm not sure she might actually just tell 95 plus percent of people uh, that they are trans. So, and you know, I know that I am trans, but you know, um, Anyway, I, I won't dwell on that point too much. But anyway, so I started, I did that. And then I, I got onto this um, sort of false notion that uh, you need to, um, you know, you need to see a, a doctor and, and uh, get pre a, a letter for your hormones and then see a doctor and get them prescribed and all of this and that. And I, I got that information basically because I started on an internet forum that I also would never recommend to anybody, which is called um, Susans.org. Um, so that's negative publicity. Don't go to Susans.org. Don't go to that website. Run far, far away from it. Um, anyway, that, they have a very sort of what they call a gatekeeper mentality. And that would be like um, they, how to say? I think, and there's you know a number of different, um, there's a number of different sort of views on this, but my personal view is that um, a lot of the transitioners are older, and a lot of the transitioners were subject to um, this sort of gatekeeping, which is um, you have to kind of be hazed or whatever before you can get onto hormones and before you can transition, and. In my personal opinion, I think they're a little bit bitter about it, and they want the younger generations of transsexuals. I'm by no means young myself, but I'm certainly younger than, um, you know, the median age at Susan's. I would say. Um, they kind they kind of want everybody else that follows after them to also have to sort of suffer this experience, whether consciously or subconsciously. I don't know. Um, but in any case, they really, really push the whole, we don't talk about hormone dosages, go see a uh, psychologist, go see a doctor, a therapist, get your prescriptions. And um, especially where I live in Southeast Asia, um, it's not even necessary. You can buy all of this stuff right over the table, um, or right over the counter, sorry. <laughs> um, 
and you know uh, your spironolactone, your estrofem, uh, injections, uh, whatever you want. Um, you can you can just buy it at a pharmacy, any pharmacy. I mean, almost any pharmacy, as long as it's got a reasonably big um, selection of uh, drugs. So, uh, what the the advice that I was getting off of the internet was that um, HRT, you know, hormone therapy is dangerous, you need to be strictly monitored, etc., etc. Um, when in fact, um, uh, I, I did get very concerned about that, I got concerned about my health, so I, I did actually, even though I didn't have to, I contacted, you know, the gender therapist, I did eventually get even a letter of recommendation for hormones, even though I don't need one. Um, I then contacted a, an endocrinologist in, um, in Canada, um, and uh, I paid. I paid for that as well. And um, I went to Malaysia, and I saw a doctor, and I actually got prescribed estrogen as well, even though I didn't need that either. Um, so I did a lot of things, spent a lot of time, a lot of um, money on uh, things that I didn't really need to do. Um, and during this time, it was a, t a time of sort of very intense anxiety. Um, luckily, or sort of luckily anyway, um, incidentally, I did make a friend in Malaysia, and uh, it was another transsexual uh, lady, and uh, I think she was in her early to mid-thirties, and um, she was very, very friendly to me um, when I asked her some questions, and she was very generous with her time, and in uh, in coming to meet me and I can tell that she really wanted to be friends with me and um, uh, when I went to Malaysia she was so generous with her time um, you know she had a car and she um, I went to the hospital I was saving sperm just in case I decided that I ever wanted my own biological children and also seeing the other doctor about um, getting that prescription for my hormones and um, um, I, I gotten blood tests done as well here in Cambodia, and um, anyway, uh, that was sort of nice, but um, there it was a little bit awkward in, in some moments. We're just kind of, we come from different backgrounds. She comes from sort of a Middle Eastern background, and I, I got um, a Westerner expat, so obviously we have, you know, different ways of uh, living our lives and thinking about things, um, different perspectives on things and whatnot. And um, things were, were basically okay. And, and I got to say, though, that she really did support me a lot, chatting on Facebook and all the rest of it. When I was going through these thoughts of waiting to get on hormones, I think I waited... I didn't even wait that long. I waited... I waited... Um, hmm, maybe four or five months. I'm not sure exactly. Um, from the time that I saw a, a, the gender therapist until I started hormones. So that's not really too bad. It might have even been less than that. It might have been like three or four months. Um, but during this time, I went through intense feelings of, um, you know, this is, this is taking forever and I'm, I'm, I'm losing my hair, I'm, I'm becoming more manly, um, and, and, uh, and even, you know, suicidal thoughts like, I, I can't take this, I just need to end to end it. Um, and, and she was very supportive during that time, so you know, I'll always be thankful for how supportive she was to me there. Um, now, uh, this is going to be a little bit of a long video, I guess, so just uh, sorry about that, but it's, it's a long story. So anyway, um, I, I did get on hormones, I came back, my house was flooded actually because a pipe had burst. And even though the house was flooded and I should have been extremely upset, um, I was so happy because I was starting hormones. Uh, I was just like all zen about it or whatever, and uh, I just, I didn't let it bother me too much. Um, so, after, um, after I'd started hormones for roughly 75 days, um, I had seen some breast growth, um, 
and a little bit of changes, but I wasn't really thinking, I don't think that my, my thought processes or anything like that had changed very drastically. I did get some placebo effect on the first day to week or so, and um, that way I would describe it is basically more or less like a mild ecstasy high, and that was just kind of a euphoria sort of thing. And um, so that was interesting. Um, now, what happened after that? Um, after those days, I got another blood test. I saw the blood test results um, show that I was healthy, um, but my hormone levels were basically, they were the same, and actually my testosterone level was higher <laughs> than it was um, since I had started the, the lower dose hormone replacement therapy that had been recommended by um, the Canadian uh, endocrinologist. So uh, that was kind of discouraging, but um, I increased my dosage and I checked it with the endocrinologist. He said that was fine. And um, I then tried injections. Um, the normal injection uh, substance that they use is called estradiol valerate. Um, I couldn't find that here, but I could find this stuff called ovadiol, which is estradiol benzoate. And I, I could only dig up like one or two studies on the internet that talked about dosages, but basically my idea was to give myself um, one injection of that every two to three days. And um, I did that, I think, three times maybe. You have to give it like intramuscular injections. So we're talking a needle like this long, and it, you have to stick it in your bum. And there's also happens to be this nerve that runs through your bum. So you have to stick it in your bum in the right place to make sure that you don't hit this nerve. If you hit this nerve, you can like paralyze yourself. And before you inject it, you have to pull the needle out a little bit to make sure that you didn't hit a vein because if you inject it into the vein, that can be bad too. So it's a very scary, painful, stressful process every two to three days. And then in addition to that, I had these huge mood swings. So I eventually decided Mm, I don't want to do that. Um, it's not worth it. If it was a stradiol valorate, maybe I could consider it. Or if I was, um, I, I considered doing subcutaneous, which is just injecting into the skin, but I wasn't sure about what dosages I should be using. And so I decided ultimately just to go back to um, estrofem, which is sublingual estrogen. You just put it under your tongue, and I do it um, a day in the day and in, in the morning, or in the, the day and in the evening. So morning and evening, sorry. <laughs> um, so I, I, I ended up doing that and things just kind of progressed along. And um, I did start noticing pretty shortly after that, um, actually with the injections especially, uh, with the really, the mood swings and things like that, I did have some definite sort of female experiences. Um, I had what I would guess is basically a female orgasm, which was interesting and exciting, I guess. <laughs> it was fun, anyway. Um, I also had um, bouts of just sort of spontaneous, being very emotional and crying a lot. Um, and that persisted a little bit after I switched back to the estrofem, the sublingual estrogen, uh, as opposed to the the, the short time on injections, but it was much more intense on the injections. So um, I think, at, at, you know, at some point in time, once I can get back, or once I can get estradiol valorant, I will, I will use injections instead of, um, instead of pills. But, you know, for the time being, I'll, I'll just use the sublingual pills. That's, seem to, they seem to be doing a fairly good job. So if it's not broken, don't fix it, I guess, for now. Um, but, you know, that doesn't mean that uh, I can't make it better, so certainly um, I definitely want to give injections a try again once I can get some Estradiol Valor from Thailand. Well, so um, also around this time, my sexual interest in my girlfriend really, really started to, to, um, to go away kind of thing, it started to fade. And um, uh, that was very hard on both of us, especially hard on her. And 
there was this one incident instance or incident when she was screaming at me and crying and even throwing things at me as if I was like possessed or something by a, a ghost or something like that um, you know who who are you and and crying like you know give give me back my man I don't know who you are um, so I was definitely going through some changes in in um, I guess in my personality or at least how she perceived me to project my personality I'm, I'm not sure I guess it's probably some sort of combination um, so that was rather upsetting and it was very difficult for both of us at this time I contemplated for a long time and I decided that um, it was best to say look um, we can sort of stay in whatever this is that we have now, this relationship, but we're not really sexually compatible anymore. Um, you know, we tried, we really did try. Uh, we're, we're not lesbians. Um, you know, there just wasn't any attraction there. And, um, and so at that point I said, you know, if you want to have a boyfriend or something like that, it's okay. If you want to go on dating sites, it's okay. And I said, but, you know, also on the other side of things, I, I, at that point I was nowhere close to um, looking at that female or that feminine. So uh, that certainly wasn't really a possibility for me, but I said that, you know, and for me as well, you know, when I get to that point, then we'll, we'll just do that. But I said that there's no point in um, hastening things along any or making this any harder than it needs to be. So, um, so that's what we did. And then we decided that we wanted to remain as very close friends or, or like sisters, basically. And, um, and so far, at least, that seems to have worked out fairly well. And um, uh, yeah, so like, I mean, for example, today, uh, I have kind of a, some kind of, you know, a guy that I talk to on the internet that might come over to see me. And she's been out with guys, you know, quite a few times. She's been on dates. I've been on dates. Um, and that seems to have been okay. You know, we, we are making the transition from, well, we've made the transition from romantic partners to platonic friends. Um, but still kind of partners in a way. So, um, but anyway, I'm very glad that, that that was able to happen. However, um, around this time, um, I had a, a friend who uh, came over to see me, an old poker friend. Uh, and uh, He decided to come over and see me. And at this time, um, I was starting to, I was starting to kind of look more feminine and I'd been out um, in, in sort of girl mode um, a couple of times by this point and I had um, I had uh, sort of decided that well you know my friend is coming and he's seen some photos of me in girl mode and I'm just gonna go full-time now and when I told my friend that I knew from Malaysia, who had been so supportive and so helpful to me, that I was going to go full time, um, I expected her to be very happy for me, but instead she kind of reacted with, she said, I think the exact words were like, you, you still look like a man, you look like a lady boy, and you need to wait longer, wait another year. And I was like, are you kidding me? You want me to wait another year going out dressed as a man and presenting as a man? Are you kidding me? Like, how can, like, why would you say that? And I understand maybe in her case, it's because that's what she had to do. She waited, you know, a year and a half, two years before she, she did that, as opposed to me, I waited maybe six or seven months. But that's no reason to say that. I said to her, well, I said, even though I look like a ladyboy and people can tell I'm a ladyboy, it doesn't mean that um, 
it doesn't mean that I can't be pretty still. I can be a pretty lady boy, right? I mean, what's wrong with that? You know, why do I have to be like a girly looking man? Why can't I be a pretty lady boy? I'd rather be a pretty lady boy than a girly man, even if I can't look like a, you know, a, a cis girl. Um, but anyway, so she became like really hostile and passive aggressive. And I don't know the reason, but if I had to speculate, I would say that she probably felt a little bit jealous of me, or envious, sorry, of me. And um, was just, that was translating into her being passive aggressive. And it just reached a point where every time I spoke with her, she was, she was just being like this. And I, I just couldn't take it after a little while. So eventually what I did was, I, um, I just couldn't take it. I just removed her from, from Facebook and didn't talk to her again. That was it. And yeah, I didn't say goodbye. I just, that's it. I, I, I can't take this anymore. Um, and you know, if she has some sort of issue or something that she really needs help with, I'll do what I can to help her because she was so helpful to me, but we can't be friends. You know, it's, we're just, um, I don't know, that, that whole thing just really ruined it for me. But anyway, I went, um, I went full time <laughs> with uh, thick eyebrows and everything. If you look at my image you are uh, gallery, uh, you'll be able to see um, how I looked at that time. And uh, I think I looked okay with makeup, but definitely like a ladyboy. And I went with my friend, and we went to the ocean, and we played a poker tournament. And when I was at the poker tournament, I never had a single rude remark. Everybody was very friendly to me, and um, I was actually gendered as, as miss and things like that the whole time. And uh, in general, it was a very, very positive experience. And after that, I never looked back, just been full time. After going full time um, for the past, I mean, from then until now, so uh, maybe four or five months or something like that, I'm not sure exactly, but from then until now, I've just been continuously working on my presentation, working on my makeup. Um, obviously today I'm not wearing any makeup except for eyeshadow, but um, uh, in any case, um, you know, you can watch other videos if you want to see how I look in um, more heavy makeup. Uh, but working on my presentation, working on my makeup, um, and just living my life as female. And uh, I would say that things have been going pretty good um, as of late on, um, on certain sites such as Reddit and things like that. I've gotten extremely positive feedback. Um, I did my little or doing my little adventure with uh, camming and getting very, very good feedback there as well. And um, it's uh, smooth sailing so far. And then recently, um, just a few weeks ago, I got a blood test back and um, I am in female ranges for estrogen levels and for testosterone levels. All of my other kidney and liver function looks good. My blood glucose and cholesterol and things like that, they look good. But really, what I really want to say though is, I don't know why, but in the trans community, there are a lot of people who are going to tell you, you can't do this. Or they're gonna say, you need to slow down or they're gonna discourage you from doing something and their reasons most of the time are just, I don't know, um, they feel bad about themselves and they want others to also feel bad. Um, I don't really know what it, what it is that motivates these people to do this. Um, but a lot of the trans people that I met were the exact opposite of supportive. Um, you know, they were just very passive aggressive and not helpful at all. And if I had taken their advice, I would definitely not be as far along as I am now. And that's not to say that I don't have a long way to go yet, but I'm 
you know, this is one year and I'd say I'm doing pretty good if I can compare myself to other transsexuals who have been transitioning for one year, I am, I'm doing pretty good, you know, so anyway, um, you have to go your own way, listen to yourself, be confident, and don't listen to the naysayers and the gatekeepers who want to hold you back and want to, want to, um, I don't know, just want, want you to, to live your life slower or, or at a slower pace than you're comfortable with. You know, if you want to go at a slow pace, go at a slow pace. But if you want to pick up the pace, you know, as long as it's reasonable, um, then do it. And don't listen to people who, who tell you otherwise. Seriously, um, you know, some of the passive-aggressive remarks, for example, that I got from, from people at the beginning were, were, were stuff like, oh, well, you know, you might have high cholesterol levels, you might not be able to go on HRT. Um, or, you know, like, why would you say that? Why are you, um, I'm so hopeful to go on HRT and then somebody is just telling me like, oh, maybe, maybe you can't really go on HRT, you know, and they're, or they're saying, um, you know, not everybody can, can pass. Um, uh, and, and uh, you know, you might be a little bit too old or um, just so much stuff like this. And it, like, yeah, if you are going to be transitioning, you know, use the community resources for the academic sort of, you know, dosages and information about makeup and transition stuff. But don't talk to the people. Seriously, don't get to know them. Most of them are really damaged and they're probably not going to be that helpful to you. Um, so, so you got to kind of make your own way. If, um, if you happen to be transitioning. So that's my thoughts on my one year, some basically one year anniversary of HRT. And um, I hope that they're useful to somebody out there. Okay, take care everybody. And um, yeah, bye.